There's a lot of comparisons out there trying to compare this moment in time to historical moments like 1968 to 1992 or even the Arab Spring riots. But friend of the show, Zed Jelani, says this moment is a lot closer to another historical time. He recently tweeted that it's more like the looting that took place in Baghdad after the Bush people disbanded the Iraqi army and had no plan for security. He joins us now via Skype for more on this. Zed, always great to see you. Great to see you, Zed. It's good to be here. All right, what were you trying to lay out here in this tweet? Yeah, so I think there's a mistake that can be made on social media where you kind of get points uh, for making, I think, quick comparisons and kind of simple uh, points that a lot of people would think that anytime there's writing, there's liberation around the corner, there is uh, kind of great outcomes for everybody involved. Uh, but actually, historically, in the United States and elsewhere, writing is a sign of large scale disorder, uh, chaos. It generally has negative social, political, and economic outcomes. And honestly, a lot of what's happening in cities, I think, that didn't really plan for this and didn't really uh, establish the relationship you need to prevent the rioting is that they're going to see bad outcomes for years to come, including increased homicide rates, economic devastation, uh, empowering of hardliners on the right and the political right in their, in their sort of social and political spheres. Uh, and I think that we really have to think through the outcomes of a lot of what's happening here so that we can respond to these to these events kind of in, in the most kind of compassionate and effective way. So Zed, I mean, you've done a lot of study on uh, the attitudes of African Americans towards this type of violence in the, in the 1968 yeah. during the civil rights era, and also broadly yeah. about how communities can responsibly police in an environment like this. Can you just lay that out yeah. some of the audience? I think it's very valuable. Yeah, so it's interesting. So a lot of people studied the impact of both protests and rioting in the 1960s. Actually, a very a very good paper by a Princeton professor was just released last month uh, looking at public opinion. What it showed is that the civil rights movement was incredibly effective in moving public opinion towards civil rights. It even increased the vote share for Democratic presidential candidates. But when things turned violent in the late 60s, the opposite happened. People kind of shifted so hard towards social control that the paper actually theorizes that if the violence had not happened, uh, Richard Nixon wouldn't have been elected. And of course, Richard Nixon started the war on drugs. Uh, he sent us down the road to mass incarceration, uh, so on and so forth. And what's interesting is a lot of people predict this, predicted this at the time. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. said that every riot that develops actually helps George Wallace. Uh, they did polling at the time among African-American populations. I think something like 4% of African-Americans said that the riots actually helped their cities. Right. There was almost no public support for writing whatsoever. And I think that's probably very similar to now. If you took a poll, we're talking about a few hundred people splintering off from protests, maybe in a number, a range of American cities. Many of the people who riot, by the way, don't have a political cause. Uh, there isn't such a thing as uh, common criminals right, who take advantage of political vacuums that are created when law enforcement kind of withdraws. That's true in the United States. That's true everywhere in the rest of the world. And I think, you know, the, the wider point here is that rioting is just counterproductive to, to any kind of humane and civil political cause, which is why I think most people are engaged in peaceful and civil protests. And actually, if you look at the last poll on this, I think something like 94 percent of the American public said they agreed with that that police officer in Minneapolis being arrested. So really, the issue isn't polarized. The actual issue about police reform actually has tons of bipartisan support. Uh, it's this violence, I think, that's really tearing people apart and, and causing a lot of this political polarization right now. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of um, violence coming from the police forces as well. And, of course, massive militarization, everyone out, you know, in riot gear and, and that approach as well. I mean, is that effective in quelling riots? Because it seems like it's exacerbating the tensions and inflaming the situation rather than really uh, bringing calm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, anytime there's an abuse and people are kind of clued into it, it's going to harm that relationship as well. And I think Keisha Lance Bottoms in, in uh, Atlanta has really, I think she's outdone herself in that she's done two things very well. One, she set a norm immediately that if you engage in violence as a civilian or rioting, you are not honoring George Floyd, you're actually dishonoring him. So one, she sent that signal to the population, which I think was the opposite of what, what those people in, in, uh, who run Minnesota were doing, unfortunately, in the, in the first few days. The second thing she did is she fired two police officers immediately who are caught on video uh, tasering two students, uh, abusing them and abusing their rights. Mm. So what she's saying is basically that violence by anybody, whether it comes from uh, some criminal who's exploiting people's political grievances to just loot something, or whether it's police officers who are behaving in sadistic or excessive ways, that you know the, the rule of law will be applied here. And I think that's very, very important. Anywhere in society, whether it's Wall Street, uh, or whether it's you know a, a gang that happens to be taking advantage of a situation anywhere in society where the rule of law is kind of abolished, 
you see abuses. And, that, and of course, that happens with the police as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, such an important point, Zed. Thank you so much for your perspective this morning. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Zed. Thank you. Next on Rising, The Intercept's D.C. Bureau Chief Ryan Grimmie is going to discuss Amazon's apparent support of the protests. And also uh, we're going to discuss attacks on journalists with Ryan as well. That when Rising continues.